Today I'm going to be running you through my new Cash Out Focus build for Heavy, and I think that this will surprise many opponents you may come across. As of course you know, we have obviously had recent buffs and nerfs, the buffs leading on to light side and the nerfs with heavy, which overall will be good and bad for us. Firstly, why is this bad? Well, obviously since glitch grenades are now impact grenades on shields such as our mesh and domes, we're really going to struggle trying to close the gap between, you know, like lights for example, or even be able to hold a position. This means that obviously, although you can still use those shotguns that are offered to us, those types of fights are going to be, I guess, I know, more riskier to take. Um, because obviously if the light is smart enough to kind of keep that distance from you, then essentially you're just at a disadvantage. However, on the good side, that does mean that light still has that very risky health aspect. So obviously in my case, if I do start to see more light players playing overly aggressive in my lobbies, then obviously that is just an easy punish for us. Now, I think what Embark are really doing here is basically trying to, I guess, nerf or kill that kind of solo carry player aspect of the game. They want you to find a team. They want you to plan, you know, how to steal and, you know, how to defend and set up scenarios, for example. Um, but that doesn't obviously mean that solo play is completely impossible. And this build will actually help you understand that you don't have to fully rely on your teammates to play like gods for you to be able to qualify in the tournaments. First up, the weapons. And if you've been watching my guides, you know that I don't force you to pick a certain choice so what i'll do is i'll basically explain my choice and alternative in my reserves since the new update i actually like playing the m60 um just really because of the fire rate and those extra bullets in the magazine i've noticed that playing the m60 it can actually kind of allow you to uh, essentially take two or even if you're lucky three players with you in a fight of course you'd obviously have to combo with other abilities as well and obviously help out with the teammates but i found that it's actually pretty effective longer range especially versus those lights now taking advantage of the new buffs However, other mentions is obviously the auto shotgun, which I still think, you know, it's fine. I don't think it's really that effective against you. Um, you just obviously really have to be much more precise now with your shots. And this shotgun is now less forgiving. Um, but I actually instead enjoy using the new shotgun, which is the KS. The strengths of this weapon is, of course, the environmental damage that it gives you. Um, for example, if you're defending, um, you could essentially secure the floor below you, let them have the cash out room above you. Um, and whilst you're setting up your defenses, shoot three shells into the floor below the cash out. So when a team basically comes over to it and starts to steal, all you have to do is just shoot one bullet into the floor and then engage with your five remaining slugs. However, the weakness of this weapon is really the fact that it's very hard to master. It has a kind of like a slower travel time um, than a bullet, for example. So basically you have to kind of compensate. Um, and then obviously if you get overwhelmed by multiple players, uh, you know, you really cannot miss with this shotgun. Okay, so what is the mastermind strategy that will help us in this new update? You guys know that I put in a lot of testing and research into each build, and I'm pretty damn happy at where I've ended up to produce a video for you guys. For the specialization, we're actually going with the goo gun. Why is this? Well, it obviously has multiple purposes that can help you when attacking and defending objectives. And Honestly, I, I think that this single spec alone will literally carry your gameplay and we'll see onto why with some fury later. Next, I obviously choose the RPG simply because it's a great opener against multiple players if they're close by. And obviously now that we're running into more lights, you can still take them out running around the arena. For the second gadget, I actually choose the anti-gravity grenade. Obviously it is a new gadget. And the reason why I've chosen this is because you can do some really fancy stuff combining it with the goo gun. Finally, we have the dome shield and you might be questioning why we have this because obviously of the latest buffs for light and the health of the shield isn't the best but I'll actually explain that and we'll get onto that a little bit later. For attacking objectives I actually like to do one of two things. If the cash out is in a place that can be raised I'll actually take out the roof of the RPG, throw a dome shield on the cash out into an anti-gravity grenade then once the cash out is being raised go grenade under it and then start to steal. The reason for this is because the dome shield can basically be placed initially to protect the anti-gravity, the goo grenade can hold the floor if it does get shot out, and then also give you an easy steal. It sounds very weird to do right away, but give it a few attempts and matches and you'll start to see that it is really an effective strategy. Eventually, people will catch on and then start to shoot out the anti-gravity grenade initially, so if you don't need cover, then you can either put the dome shield just outside of the range and it will reach over and protect the anti-gravity from bullets, or what you can do is put the anti-gravity a floor below, then raise the cash out that way. Speaking of coming across higher ranks, obviously you will eventually likely need a duo or trio. 
um, to kind of help support you doing things like this. Um, for example, you know, a medium could obviously APS where you're raising the cash out to stop heavies from destroying the goo. And then essentially the third player as a light or even the medium as well could then obviously shoot anyone attempting to stop you stealing. Another one that is a lot more simple um, is when the cash out is in a place where it can obviously be raised again is to throw the anti-gravity grenade first this time and then the dome shield and then steal whilst you're lifting. And this is actually a really effective kind of, I guess, last resort kind of YOLO strategy, which um, could basically guarantee your death. But if you're able to actually steal last second, then it's basically a win in my book. Okay, so getting on to the defense strategy then. And this build is really where you're in control of the entire site. This can be done if you've just basically stolen the cash out going from what we just spoke about, or if you've just deposited the cash out into the vault. It's been kind of common that you can actually now push the cash out with the goo gun. That's happened for a little while. And really what I like to focus on is putting the cash out in a place where it's basically being held from the high ground looking down. The goo gun is super effective against moving platforms, for example, where you can actually push it off and hold from the high ground. So if I see that modifier in games, for example, like Skyway Stadium, then I already know the first thing I'm going to be doing. However, if you get a chance, you can really put the cash out in spots that are just so dumb to hold, dumb enough that I've even had people add me to say how wild these strats are that I've done. Hello? Yo, do you like that? Oh, I fucking love that. Okay, so the objective of defense is to have two things in mind. You want the cash out to be exposed in the open, preferably from the high ground where you have some cover, and also you want to be able to interrupt the cash out if it's being stolen. So obviously we've covered exposing the cash out in the open, moving it with either the goo gun or moving it of course with the anti-gravity grenade, but how do we interrupt the cash out if it's being stolen? Obviously, one of them is very common. If there is another floor below, then shooting the RPG at the player stealing can obviously drop the cash out. But those scenarios are much rarer now because we're having heavies being able to shield the players that are stealing. If you have the angle for it, you can actually use the goo gun to shoot it at the person stealing. And why is this? Well, essentially what it does is, is it resets the interaction with the person stealing on the cash out because obviously the goo has covered them. Another idea is actually either taking the room where the cash out is being defended and essentially block every entrance with the goo gun because if players do try to get in, obviously you can just keep shooting it. This idea is very effective when you're defending, for example, in the elevator because, you know, obviously the entrances are above and the door and you can keep moving the elevator with the buttons on the right and obviously keep using the uh, goo gun to block off the top even if it gets ignited like people have been saying in my comments with the medium video you can just keep replacing the goo because it doesn't just instantly get taken out if you notice in your match there is a heavy with a flamethrower or just someone with that ignite grenade um, then instead what i'll do is actually give them the access to the room where the cash out is and actually take and hold from the floor below if that's an option basically i'll goo every window and entrance and then prepare to essentially drop the floor using my RPG, or if I'm using the KS for that game instead, then I'll use that to pre-set up by shooting three at the floor, so only one more shot will be needed. In the stages for the match, we're not really looking to engage or take fights unless absolutely necessary. What we're doing is putting all our focus on attacking and defending the objectives with these strats. Remember, at the end of the day, kills don't necessarily matter in the finals, and what really does matter is having a player that is focusing on taking the objectives. I hope this guide has at least helped you get a new, unique understanding on how to play the finals. It's a very unique strategy that I've come up with, and it's also a ton of fun, and I genuinely think this might actually change some things in the meta as well in the game currently. This took a lot of time, obviously testing in casual matches and tournament mode as well, so I hope that you enjoy it, and as always, my name's Vinthix, and I'll see you on the podium.